Hey everyone, drawing time. Let's talk about art planning and schedules. Is it something important for everyone to practice in order to maintain efficiency, since you can't depend on motivation to randomly show itself to get moving? It's up to you to make inspiration yourself, because being an artist, especially if you're not part of a studio, can be just as much of a full-time job as any other, as much as there are many people who don't see it as such. A lot of artists will go about it with a sense of, maybe I'll do something of this, and maybe a little of that, and who knows. Not to say being random is bad, it's not, but you'd best set some direction so you actually get things done. You're all going to have varying types of projects, big and small, and if you have multiple active at once, it may be tempting to say, I'm going to do this until it's finished, then I'll start the next one. Under normal circumstances, yeah, multitasking is a proven lie, though society loves to bend itself around it, and it is always the least efficient approach unless one of the processes is being automated by something else. You're going to want to keep multiple things flowing, so you regularly at least have something to show for various clients over the course of time, as opposed to knocking out one thing for days and leaving absolute progressively larger radio silence with more and more people. First thing you're going to have to do, though, is define what elements of your day can't be utilized for your work. It's basically one big process of elimination until you get down to the so-called free time, even if you're independent, especially if you're independent. This does in fact mean that you're ultimately going to be going through and separating elements such as leisure and social activities into the quote-unquote optional category. On the mandatory side, of course, it's going to be things such as school and work. The former in fact may be harder to designate as school will randomly assign you things to fill the spaces that would otherwise be your time. A job, however, is somewhat easier to build a plan around, provided it stays consistent in its schedule. If it fluctuates, that can actually make things significantly more difficult, but I think quite a few of you already understand that. Another thing people are quick to forget about when planning schedule are some of the fundamentals of living, sleeping, eating, hygienics, and general health management. Tempting as it may be, the former of that list is extra critical. A lot of people are all too willing to sacrifice sleep to get something else done, and some tasks may in fact require it, but it's extremely important since those hours of sleep may ultimately get to alter the course for your actual efficiency the next day if you skimp out. Within the actual art end of things, there are actually a lot more factors that are picking at your time than people tend to think of. If you're only evaluating your raw drawing time, you're missing potentially another 50% of the equation that wraps around it. You're going to be spending time simply to get ready to work on something. Going through your files or material, finding the correct things, saving your files, backing up your work, waiting for your hard drive to process things if you're working digital. If you're working traditionally, you've got to prep your tools, setting up and putting away things, especially if you're talking about things like painting, sculpting, etc. Certain things require waiting for media or to dry or the like, that counts as time to be factored. You've got to get some, though not necessarily all works published and posted online, right? Well, that's time that has to be counted and considered. What places with what formatting need to be used what ways? What types of self-promotion spreading of that finished or even in-progress work needs to be done? And where? Heck, recall the last video where I said specific time of day where things will get the largest and smallest response may be worth factoring. In fact, here's one of the biggest things if you have clients for certain projects. Communication. That is a factor. And also, that's one of the biggest reasons why I said this is a bit of an exception in some ways for multitasking. The reality is, especially being in the 21st century, as an artist, you'll more likely be dealing with things in a global perspective, not just local. You've got potential clients in any time zone, each with their own personal schedule. You may send something off to have them review it, and hoping that they'll be right back within the next short moment to get back to you, but more often than not, that may not be the case. They could be going to bed as you're waking up. They could be at work, school, out with family, just on a lunch break, having some personal or family crisis that takes them away for X amount of time, even days. And in general, they may just not be looking at their phone, email, or website because they're watching TV or something. For this reason, you should arrange your work pattern such that you can progress on something to a stage to have it sent off and looked at. And in that nebulous meantime, start work on the next project, and then the next. Of course, they may have a deadline, combined with those aforementioned elements, and you'll need to compress or shift things to fit to that as well. So, having laid out all those various things, let's come up with an example of how things could look. I'm just going to set everything up as average time values, because everyone's got different needs and speeds. I'll use an independent style first to set this up. First, take out 8 hours for sleep, maybe you just need 7, but you might need 1 in order to crash in the first place. Next, say you might need a half hour for breakfast, a half hour for lunch, and a half hour for dinner, not counting prep time, just eating, maybe. So, we're already out nine and a half hours, but you also are based on an eight hour planned working day you need to add a couple 15 minute breaks, ten hours out. You should probably knock out another hour for hygienics at the beginning and end of the day. And ideally, maybe you're taking an hour in the day towards working out for health purposes. Twelve hours, half the day out. Okay, not bad. Here's where it starts getting trickier. 
Ideally, like say, you're planning on an eight hour actual working period. So that's one third of your day, which immediately means you've got only four hours left. Is this all towards the end of the night before bed? Or are you active later, and so this is front loaded? Or sprinkled in between? Well, you might watch a show, arrange time with a friend, family, attend some kind of social activity, or you might have to run errands, clean house, or the like. Any combination of those basically now have to fit into a four hour period. Here's something you might not have thought of. All the extra things I mentioned, like communications, file management, setup, promotion, uploading, etc, etc, etc. Are you counting those within the 8 hour working period, or are those operating outside of it because you're actually using the 8 hours to focus on the drawing specifically? That's an easy hour or two gone depending on all the things you work with. Here's the other thing no one likes to admit. Social media and your smartphone, built to keep you going. Recall I talked about infinite scrolling and why it's better to put settings where applicable to have a forced stop and separate pages. Other than that, you may be tempted to check your phone regularly. Well, here's a hint. Kill as many notifications as possible. My phone is set to so that the only ways it can notify me is if it's a direct text message, a phone call, or an email. Nothing else on the phone is permitted to send a notification. In fact, any of the more distracting apps don't even get to be on the first screen, so I can't even see quiet notifications. All this is going to be a factor for building your personal schedule in different amounts, and you'll have to look at all the elements independently. And remember, that example didn't even add a job or school. You might be able to snip out lunch and merge it into those, but consider. You have a full-time job, 8-hour workday, that's actually more like 9 hours to remove. 4-hour day, 4.5 hours removed, 6-hour day, potentially 7. Work, lunch, break, transportation, and that's if it's close by. If you have longer commutes, knock those out all the way too. Overtime, it happens. In school, everything's just out the window. You may have to whittle down your leisure time to get work done, especially if things happen to, and you get backed up. It's a thing. Sleep would be the last thing to voluntarily whittle down, because if you don't sleep well, you may not work well the next day and just compound your problems. These are all a bunch of things that you're going to have to work out, and also make sure others understand how important it is to help you maintain that so you can be a more efficient artist too. And with that said, if you want a better look at the process behind this design and video and more time-lapse content, click the below links to find the collection on Gumroad. If you want to support further creation of videos like this, subscribe, hit the notification bell below, and consider donating to my Ko-fi. I currently upload on Saturdays, so until then, catch y'all next time!